over at Morgan Stanley downgrading Tesla to equal weight from overweight. You no, know, I thought that was pretty funny. He said, quote, I have to be upfront with you all. Uh, while the team has defended the Tesla over, overweight rating all year, I did not see a 101% year date uh, rally coming. If the rumble in the metaverse, uh, <laughs> what are they calling this, Jenny? I, I am not sure there's a title yet officially. I, I am not yeah. calling it anything. It is one of the most ridiculous stories. The thriller I've... from Palo Alto. I don't know. Let's bring in Gary Black, manager partner of the Future Fund, and I'm sure loving the big tech strength as much as anybody, of course, including and not limited to, though, Tesla's big run up. Because you're a big Tesla bull, Gary, and I know you haven't changed your thoughts about it at all, right? Nope, we're still bullish. Tesla stock always a wild ride up today from the epic slide earlier this week. Many a chicken little thought the sky was falling, but the key is don't panic. Have a plan if you're invested in Tesla stock. For the day, Tesla up nearly 2%. Even with that sh yesterday, Tesla is still up 4.5% for the week. For the month, Tesla up almost 40%. For the year, 13%. In year to date, since January, Tesla is up a monster 144%. And everybody and their mom has a reason why Tesla is doing so well. You know the tryhards have no confidence in their fair value estimates. That's why you're gonna see a little fear in the coming weeks. As for me, I have no fear. No one knows what it's going to do in the short term. But I got a good idea what it's gonna do when the stock market figures out what Tesla's true valuation is. And when that occurs, everyone, these analysts included, will be shocked at the results. You and I know different though. While the bears had their day yesterday, I bought a couple more shares of stock, and with the implied volatility, I couldn't place any short-term options. The price is just too high. Juice is not worth the squeeze. Tesla is a unique, magnificent beast, a unicorn in the stock market, if you will. Now, I have a call that I have no intention of exercising that will expire September 15th. On screen now, the market value of $2,960. Tesla's current price is $265.66, a little higher than at the close of the bell. My total return is almost 6%, and here's the kicker, my break-even price is $293. What does that tell you? That means I've essentially placed a bet that by September 15th, Tesla will have a market cap of $1 trillion once again. The question is not if that will ever happen, it's a matter of when. And this $2,800 bet, I'm kind of putting my money where my mouth is and saying that it'll be sooner rather than later. I could be wrong, but that's the thrill of it, people. In my bear case, I have Tesla at $364 per share. That's without robo taxis. That's without the energy division being included in there. It's pretty much vanilla right off the automotive, essentially. Now my base case and my bull case, totally different stories. But when I'm talking about options, I don't even look at that because I know the market isn't there yet. They're not ready. Sure, I could be out. If the stock drops to 200, I'm asked out. There's no doubt about it. I'll be asked out of $2,800, which at this time, what's 2,800 divided by 265? Well, you heard my assistant. Instead of buying that options contract, I could have easily bought 10 and a half shares or so and just called it good because I have a long-term thesis. I know Tesla, the company, is gonna be worth trillions of dollars in the future. You might be asking, Hustle, why not just buy the shares and be done with it? Because I like the thrill and the prospect of more money. But Hustle, you're gonna have to pay capital gains tax on all of those things. I'm fully aware of that. That's the goal. I'd like to win more of these trades than I lose. That's why I reserve about 25% of every successful trade in a slush fund that I will look at in February. If I have to pay capital gains tax, I'll take the money from that fund and do so happily. Don't worry, I've got a plan. Question is, do you? All right, let's talk some stocks here. Renita Young in the newsroom standing by our senior markets correspondent. Renita, yesterday, part of the problem was that we saw a little bit of hesitance from analysts on some of the big winning stocks lately, and it seems like we got that again this morning, once again on Tesla. Yes, it's the second big, or second big move, I should say, yeah. on Tesla, and this one came from a longtime bull over at Morgan Stanley downgrading Tesla to equal weight from overweight and raising the price target to $250. That's up from $200, but it still represents about a 4 
4% move to the downside from where it closed yesterday. But this analyst essentially says that this stock got a little bit too hot. It was overvalued in its recent valley rally. It did benefit from the AI excitement. However, this analyst says that the recent decline puts it at a more fair market valuation and at a more balanced risk reward ratio. Now, he views this as both benefiting from AI and a car company, and he sees that it does have an AI upside. However, that AI upside has run out of steam right now. And there was also a downgrade, of course, from yesterday from Barclays, who cut this or who downgraded this stock to an equal weight from an overweight, raised the price target to $260 from $220. You can see the price closed around that number, said almost the same thing, that it's been too sharp relative to the current conditions of the market right now, and that he thinks that the long-term initiatives that the company's put in, while good and while bullish, they should take a little bit more time. This will be the consensus all the way around. Tesla has gone too far too fast. It's unsustainable, right? Wrong. Talking about Tesla, it moves up and down with reckless abandon. That's why many of these analysts are going to pull back their expectations and take a wait and see approach. Quarter after quarter, year after year, Tesla has been surprising Wall Street with great frequency. Stunning how off the mark many of these analysts, including Morgan Stanley, have been over the years. And because they can't fathom Tesla going any higher, forget about 2021 when it was making 10% leaps overnight. Forget about all the things that you know what stocks typically do. You have to recognize this as what it is. Tesla is a unicorn in the market that no one can predict. All we can do is study it. The uh, drop here over the last couple of days, uh, pretty significant. Uh, anytime you decline, you know, 30 bucks on a $280 stock, a uh, uh, pretty big deal. So a uh, bit of a uh, you know, pause um, in the rally at best. Uh, mm -hmm. If not, um, you know, in a worst case scenario, reversal. But look, we've come a long ways real fast. And even these notes from analysts are still having to push the price targets up. So uh, not super bearish just yet, but definitely a little bit of uh, you know a change in tone to some degree so i'm gonna tell you like this there's no telling what the stock market will do be comfortable in your decisions on what you decide to do with it but if you're a long-term investor and you plan to hold the stock for multiple years or maybe even into the next decade do not let this fear uncertainty and doubt from the experts distract you owning tesla stock is easy i hold that's all you do don't worry about the noise in the interim you buy, you hold. Now, Tesla options, that's not for the faint of heart. You'll lose your shirt if you're not careful. Wait. Hi, shifting gears now to Morgan Stanley, out with a new note on Tesla this morning. The firm downgraded Tesla to equal weight from overweight and raised the company's price target to $250 US from $200. Joining us now is Yahoo Finance's Pras Subramanian to help us break it all down. Hey, Pras. Hey, how's it going, Rochelle? Yeah, you know, the old... Uh I'd call it the old cut and raise, downgrade cut here by Adam Jonas, but also raising the price target to 250, like you mentioned. You know, uh, Jonas talking about how this was sort of based on an AI fueled run up uh, in the stock, but now that it's sort of uh, the, but now the price is up to over 250, around 250, he sees it as fairly valued at that point. Wait a minute, I thought most of Wall Street just thought Tesla was a car company. What do you mean they're factoring in some of the AI play? Is, is that what have we have we experienced the AI play? I think not. Very few people on Wall Street give Tesla credit for their full self-driving software, and that's essentially what they're using AI for. We ain't seen nothing yet. Rumble in the metaverse. Uh, <laughs> what are they calling this, Jenny? I, I am not sure there's a title yet officially. I, I am not yeah. calling it anything. It is one of the most ridiculous stories. The thriller I've from Palo Alto. I don't know. I, I don't even know how to possibly characterize it, but it's it's very entertaining. It's definitely the most Agreed. entertaining story we might have talked about yet, Oliver. But we are hearing reports that CEO Elon Musk, CEO, CEO Mark Zuckerberg, are now set to square off in a match that is set to take place in Vegas. So the backstory behind this is it all started oh, nice. really when Musk reacted to some reports we got about Twitter, where actually Meta's chief product officer was saying the company has been hearing from creators and public figures who are interested 
in having a platform that is sanely run. So then he did respond, and we saw responses that said, to, told Musk to be careful, basically, because Zuckerberg does jujitsu now. He said he's <laughs> up for a cage match if he is, and then Zuckerberg posted a screenshot of the exchange saying, send me the location. So Zuckerberg has been training in jujitsu. This has been pretty well documented for over a year now. Well, we do know that he did win a gold and silver medal sometime back in May at a tournament. As for Musk, he did respond and say he has a great move called the walrus, where he just lies on top of the opponent and <laughs> the opponent does not move. So, Oh, do not underestimate the walrus. Don't sleep on his Zuck. This has been wild. This is literally reported by several various reputable news outlets. This is not fake. This has been fact-checked now, actually, per some Meta spokesperson that said this is not coming from their fake accounts. This is actually them. Now, right. we do do know that Elon Musk then said this will take place at the Vegas Octagon. And actually, per reports we got, the UFC president now has confirmed he's been in contact with both, both Musk and Zuckerberg. So this is maybe actually oh going to happen. I would so say when you, it is hilarious and when you pair them next to each other you have to consider these are pretty substantial figures right now whether you love them or hate <laughs> them Zuckerberg does rank as the 10th richest person with a net worth of 103 billion dollars Zucker or Musk is the richest person in the world valued at around 232 billion dollars mm. and both of their companies I mean it's sort of amazing the fact that these are two of the best performers in the S&P 500 this year with meta rallying about 135 percent year to date Tesla's up 113 percent year to date i would say gentlemen focus on the fact that you are nowhere near your all-time highs though <laughs> all right well personally they might be as they engage their uh inner uh animalistic you know instinct here uh i i i've thought it's already awesome that zuckerberg uh, publicizes his move into jujitsu as you know as a nerdy guy he's always had a rep he got made fun of on south park for being a robot and now he like wants to kick elon's butt like that's amazing so you know and i'm not sure who i would say is more liked among the public because right. they both have their fair share of of enthusiasts and then and detractors the, yeah exactly okay well, that's what i said last night on twitter is like People who are poo-pooing this thing are really owning themselves as being like obsessively hateful of a person they don't you know know or whatever. Like get over it. Even if you don't like them, shouldn't you be happy they're going to beat each other up? Exactly. I, mean, I, I think this sounds like the, everybody. This is like the best thing that could ever happen to us. Right. Uh, I think it's great. I think it's entertaining and very inspiring. Thank you, Jim. As a Tesla shareholder, I don't give a flying f what Elon does with his spare time. Could this hurt the share? I don't care. In the long term, this is just noise. So if this does go down and the stock tanks, I will be forever grateful for a buying opportunity. It just goes to show you that no matter how much money you have, you still have an ego to bruise. Let me know in the comments below, Musk versus Zuckerberg. Who do you got in that fight? And for extra credit, give me the probability that this will actually go down. Is it 5%? Is it 90%? What are your thoughts? I want to know. Let's bring in Gary Black, manager partner of the Future Fund, and I'm sure loving the big tech strength as much as anybody, of course, including and not limited to, though, Tesla's big run-up. Because you're a big Tesla bull, Gary, and I know you haven't changed your thoughts about it at all, right? Nope, we're still bullish here, even though, uh, you know, it's up 110% year-to-date, but it had a bad, you know, 2012. Gary meant 2022. But, you know, they're going to have good second quarter. Volumes will come out in a couple of weeks. It'll be up 75% year over year. The cyber truck is coming probably in third quarter, which is a little early. And everybody's talking about it as an AI play. They've been uh, investing a lot. They're going to start licensing their dojo supercomputer uh, probably next year. They're setting up a separate business unit, we believe. So that gives it a little bit even more spark. So we're still pretty bullish on it, even though it's up at about 52 times next year's earnings, but it's growing at 35%. So it doesn't look expensive the way we look at it, price earnings to growth. We think it's still a relatively cheap stock. We like it. Couldn't agree more with Mr. Black there. In my bear case, 364 remains unchanged. As a matter of fact, that bear case is looking a little light given the registration numbers that are coming out of China alone. I guarantee you I won't be chasing the stock price much like Morgan Stanley. Could be uh, within the realm of possibility for Tesla's stock. Could we be seeing all-time highs again in this company? You know, we're still down from where we were. Um, you know, back, remember, in the fourth quarter, Elon had to sell about $23 billion of his of his Tesla stock to buy Twitter. 
and you had all this discounting going on in China and then in the U.S., revisions to, to make the stock go to a new high, which we think is possible, you've got to get revisions to turn around, uh, meaning earnings estimates have been dropping all year because they took pricing down in the first quarter, and they've stabilized, and that's why the stock has had an amazing run since about May 15th or so, because people believe that the second quarter gross margins or the trough, because uh, we haven't seen any price cuts, price cuts, pricing has actually been stable. As we mentioned, people are getting excited about the Cybertruck. The last time they had a new product like this was in 2020, when they introduced Model Y, which was a crossover. Um, and a stock, as you know, went up sevenfold in 2020 versus I think NASDAQ was up about 50%. So we think that's what you're going to get. Everybody's going to be very excited when Cybertruck delivery starts. It's very unique looking. I don't know if you've ever seen one up close, but it's about as big as an F-150. It looks like it belongs on Mars. Uh, but people are going to see it, and then they're going to go to the Tesla website or go to the Tesla store and buy a Model 3 or Model Y. That's what happened with Model Y. It just stimulated interest in the Tesla brand. And we haven't talked about all these EV charging um, um, uh, arrangements between mm -hmm. GM, Ford, now Rivian. Yeah, everybody's the whole on board. Industry, the whole industry is getting behind the Tesla NAX standard. That's probably worth another 20 cents a share. We think the Cybertruck, because the street is underestimating it, is worth about 60 cents a share. So we think estimates for 2024, street estimates are about 70, 80 cents too low. And we think we'll start seeing people get more excited about Tesla uh, as we get to the back half of the year and Cybertruck comes out. Now, that's interesting that Morgan Stanley downgraded today. Um, you know, it was uh, a surprise to me that he, he took his price target up, but he downgraded, like he took his earnings estimates up. So that's not usual. Usually when people take earnings estimates up and price targets up, they don't downgrade the stock, but you know, maybe he was just getting tired of it. Who knows? <laughs> Who f knows what his rhyme or reason is? Moving the stock from overweight, raising your EPS, and raising your price target, mixed signal much? But enough of that. Morgan Stanley and a series of other people are just going to be chasing the stock all the way back up to recent highs, or even if the stock does take a huge reversal, they will be chasing it back down. There is no real fundamentals to their fair value estimate. None. Uh, the uh, company's uh, been important um, to your uh, fund, the FFND ETF, the future fund ETF, year to date up 26%. Uh, where is Tesla as a uh, percent to that fund at this point? Uh, Gary, give us an update. And then also, uh, do you, though, still uh, have a fund that is uh, uh, dependent on uh, a company, concentrated on a company here? that obviously uh, last year got slammed. Yeah, so Tesla is about 10% of the portfolio today. Okay. We took it down actually before first quarter earnings because we thought the estimates were too high because of the mm. price cuts. We, 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 and the stock, at the time the stock was about 180 and then we bought back about half of it at 168. Not that we were day trading, but we thought the estimates had come down enough and then the annual meeting happened and we just felt very optimistic that Elon wasn't going anywhere. I mean, there was some debate that, you know, maybe he would go to Twitter and give up uh, Tesla. He, see, he hired Linda Yaccarino to run Twitter, which is great. I know Linda, I've talked to her many times. Um, she will be great at Twitter. So we think there's less of a chance that he'll have to put money uh, in, into Twitter because we think she can turn this around. You've got 2024 for Twitter, you've got the election, you've got the Olympics. So they should be cash flow positive by the end of the year, and she's a very strong media operator. So we feel good about that. Um, so you but, feel it's not gonna distract Elon? Correct, and, and he's okay. not gonna have to put money in, which is the most important thing. But more importantly, you know, to your point, we, we think that it's, it's it, earnings can start turning around here because the pricing has firmed up, Cybertruck's gonna be huge, the charging, um, uh, you know, contracts that they, they've set with GM and Ford and Rivian, and probably, uh, Stellantis is next and maybe Toyota will be very good for, 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 for Tesla. And in the meantime, we still have, you know, the IRA credit just went into effect this year with $7,500. Tesla's getting on its Model 3 and Model Y, which are 90% of its volume. So we think there's a lot of information out there that is still not being incorporated into Tesla stock. So we're mm. keeping it at about a 10% weight. You know, we do worry a little bit about, um, you know, the economy, right. I heard you talk about it before, that if, if, if the recession hits because the Fed insists on continuing to raise rates, as Powell has talked about the last two days, you know, a recession will hurt the auto industry and it'll hurt Tesla. So that's probably the biggest risk 
that the Fed does something stupid and keeps raising rates here. <laughs> okay, well, the last part there, of course, your own opinion inserted. Maybe fighting yeah, inflation sure. is the smart thing long term, even if it means Tesla going down. Another two-parter for you real quick, Gary. Number one is, do you think there are price cuts uh, in the six-month to year-long future for Tesla's cars like it did uh, earlier this year and late last year? And number two, uh, is that a sign if it happens that things are softening on the margin? Look, I want to be real, real clear. Prices will come down. That doesn't necessarily mean that margins will be decimated. Tesla is still benefiting from economies of scale. And as they improve the cost efficiency to make these vehicles, they're passing on those savings to the consumer with the ideal of about mid 20% margins in mind. I haven't seen a lack of demand yet. I've seen cases where there has been extreme demand and Tesla has had to skyrocket prices for their vehicles, but I've yet to see Tesla make any price cuts that would damage their margins beyond their designated goal of mid 20%, give or take 5%. Now I don't manage other people's money. I'm too dumb for that. I manage my own money, money that I don't really care to lose. Gary, however, is managing money for other people. He is sharing his Tesla knowledge with his customers and allowing them to reap the benefits. I don't think we're going to have more price cuts on Model Y, which is where all the volume is. That's now become the best selling car and truck in the United States, even, even not just EVs, all cars. And the inventories are very low. We track the inventories every day. We can see them. And the inventories around the world are pretty low. So we don't see that. What we are seeing for the second quarter, there's some inventory discounts on Model 3, Model S, and X, which, again, that's not the same as a price cut because once the inventory is gone, or at least depleted, then the price cuts go away. So we are seeing some of that as we end second quarter. But I think that that goes back to our investment thesis. Second quarter will be the trough in gross margins. Gross margins at Tesla auto gross margins were about 30 percent last year they dropped to 19 after the price cuts in first quarter this this quarter we think they'll get down to 17 and then we see a, a gradual increase back into the 21 22 23 range we've already seen price increases on model y you know since april as the inventories have fallen so i don't think we're going to see price cuts um you know again if 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 and the other thing that's really important is the ev credit goes from being a tax credit this year to an instant rebate next year. And so that means you could walk into a Tesla store, take $7,500 off, and when you're coming up with your loan payments, it's based on a $7,500 lower price versus a tax credit. You gotta wait for your income tax return, and then you get the credit back. It's, it's it, Having an instant rebate off the purchase price is so much better, and that kicks into play January 1st of 2024. So there's really no need for a price cut, I guess at this point in our mm -hmm. mind. Okay. 17%. If it comes in around 17%, be prepared for Tesla stock to crater. But should that margin number stay at 19% or higher? Excuse me, I thought I heard a cash register say something about opportunity. I, I must be hearing things. Never a dull day when you're talking about Tesla stock. Add on the fact that Elon Musk wants to lay on Mark Zuckerberg, you get a media frenzy. Newsflash, Tesla stock is extremely volatile can be up 5% one day, down 10% the next. Tesla stock will continue this trend because nobody knows how to value this company properly. They're just chasing the stock price and placing their assumptions on a company that is disrupting multiple industries at the same time. That shit doesn't work. Model out the company, extrapolate into the future what you think they'll be worth. That's all I got for you today. Be easy. Peace.